wasn't doing. IU, tricked out bone, different IU, Spectre, Pro Blue, bone crappie. We are now ready. I have got the colors written down and I went to the computer. I did look up the patterns that he's interested in me reproducing. I'm not using pictures and here's why. I'm not going to do an exact copy of anybody's pattern, whether it's factory or whether it's somebody else's. It's just a, it's taboo. You don't do it. It's not done. So I'm going to transform colors into my own patterns and make these baits hopefully come alive for Chad. And I'm going to show you what he has asked for today. So in the representations of Waka Ayu and Kiyo, IU, I hope I have not butchered the pronunciation. Um, and Spectre, I've got some colors listed out. These are going to be cool. Uh, tricked out bone and a bone crappie. I always add a little bit of gold. So I'm going to just run through these baits and I'm going to show you how I do it. You guys are going to watch a time lapse of me doing them. And I'm going to show them to you after the fact. This is primered. So you guys know I use self-etching primer. This is a KBS primer. It's really good automotive self-etching. It's going to promote adhesion to either plastic or metal. It's made for automotive, so obviously metal and primers go together. Sometimes on uh, new baits, they have a tendency to get a little bit um, delammy. They get finicky. So you want to make sure that all the oils are rubbed off. I've already done an alcohol rub. You guys don't need to see that because most of you at this point understand how to prep a bait. If you want me to put out a new video of how I prep baits now versus then, including some of these glides from Bullshot, I will be more than happy to do that for you guys. But I have pushed everything else to the side. <clears throat> Here's what you have to do. If you realize you've made a mistake and you've accidentally lost or hid or from yourself an order, you have to own it. So, Chad, I am super sorry that I screwed this up. I thought I was doing yours. The guy's name was David Muller and not you, and I apologize. So, these are being done today in a video. I hope you like how it turns out, and I'm sorry. Eat the crow, apologize, own it, and let's paint some cool stuff. From the primer stage, I have my golden mix. It is not golden completely. It's golden Createx Wicked and probably some Jacquard. Um, I mix it up because golden on itself <clears throat> has a tendency not to uh, that tendency to be real runny and not stick very well. So I'm just going to run through this real quick. Get everything from primer color to white. Because as we all know, that's going to show the colors the best. We are not going to do a true ghost on any of this because again, I do not want to duplicate some of the other colors. So we are going to make the patterns my own and just have a good time with it. Just trying to cover as evenly as possible. I might time lapse this, do a little montage feel. You guys know how to make white, I know that. is now base coated white and I've got a special mix of bone that I have put together. It's just barely one drop of pink and probably 50 to 50 white and a very pale flower yellow, like an opaque yellow. There's no brown in it. It's a real good bone color just a tiny drop of red. So there are three colors that call for bone. He wants a bone crappie, a tricked out bone, and the Spectre color, which is actually a DRT color, has got like a really pretty gray-blue fading into bone with a little splash of pink on the bottom. 
So what we'll do is we'll pull out the three bones that we're going to do. We're going to push these back and run that. We'll go from light to dark. I still have white in the cup, which is cool because that gives you a little bit better fade because you're kind of moving the bone into the white from the bottom up. Starting to see the bone and then switch to the other side. will start coming up. You get that real nice creamy blend. The blend at the bottom should kind of look like oatmeal and then moving up into the bone. You're going to do a few layers on each of these. get happy work on the next one same deal go from the bottom up and then incorporate your heavier layers towards the top maybe slow down your back and forth a little bit don't forget to do the back some sort of recipe or you've written down what you need to do which is why I have this crap paper down on the table because um, it helps me remember my patterns if I have a certain order then you can kind of incorporate doing more than one bait at one time the trick is remembering which clearly for me today is only half a battle because I did lose track of this order Now we have our bone base down, looking pretty good, and um, leave me a comment as to how you like the bone color. You're seeing this in true color, I do not color grade my swim videos or my spray sessions. And we try to do as much of a continual shot as possible. Try not to turn the camera off to give you an accurate portrayal of what exactly it is I'm doing. Now, some of you guys have, over the last couple videos, I've been noticing, I'm still reading all of them. I can't always answer you the way I used to, and I do try. I sat up last night till like 11.30 answering YouTube comments, but um, a lot of you guys are asking me to slow down and talk about my colors which is something, and thank you for that. Um, I have a tendency to forget now that I can move a lot faster because I've been doing this for such a long period of time. 
Um, sometimes I'll run through and not remember to talk about all the colors that I'm using in the video. So bone has gone in, which is now over a base white, which is over a self-etching primer, which is gray. So the primer, just to compare it to the white, looks like this. And that is that KBS self-etching primer. It's called Fusion. It's really, really good. And I've had zero issues that I know of. Um, I, if you don't tell me I have an issue, I don't know. So if you guys ever have any sort of issue with either Mike's bull shads or my baby bull shads, anything that I've custom painted, please. So the next layer that I'm going to be doing is on the Spectre color. The original color is a gray blue. And for this one, I'm going to be using the Createx, this Tim Gore Bloodline, and this is the uh, Expired Blue. Just so you know. Trying to, trying to slow down and give you guys color charts for this. Now, I'm going to shoot across the back at an upward angle. And I'm going to try really, really hard not to get below the lateral line. We just kind of want this to go across the back and the top. And also, just a little bit, about halfway down on the back. I'm going to come in a little bit harder into the eye area. I do apologize for the noise. I'm just running through this one. Just a little bit across the back. But I don't want to shoot straight down because I really don't want to have this gray blue into the body of the face. That bone there. I am going to rinse that blue out. Got that going out. Going to add just a little bit to fade up of a medium color gray, just a simple Createx. Don't need a whole lot of that, just a few drops. Make sure it's coming out in the cup all right. And then just barely come across the back of this face. You still want to be able to see that blue face. thing I'll do is enhance the darker area around the eyes with this gray. And now, again, I'm going to come across the back. But I'm going to not shoot straight down. I do have a little hiss. Yes, I know. very top and we are going to go top down just to kind of blend it down. I'm going to use a detail black magenta on this. Pearl magenta. 
And I like the pearl because we're going to be using a pearl as a overspray, kind of a top layer, just to blend everything. This is a little bit brighter than the original color, and that's fine. Just want to go real light. Kind of flare it out at the gill plates. Just kind of pull your airbrush out and out. And just kind of fade that down. Same from the back up. Flip this over. Flare that just up a little bit. Recognize if you're using helping hands. might need to go back and get a better angle. But just a little bit in the middle. Now with this particular one, I want to give it a little bit of a pearlescence, but I don't want to completely saturate the bait with it. I still really want to be able to see that blue-gray and the bone. So I'm going to be using Mission Models. It's a really nice pearl white. It's a Starship white is what they call it. And I just like the properties in it. It's thin. It's not super thick like some of the pearls could be. And it's just like a real nice glittery top coat. And it still allows you to see the colors that you have underneath of it. Which I like. Another thing that this is really good at doing, and most pearls in general, is if you have a real contrasted difference between, like, say, blue-gray and bone, because really light to really dark, a pearl will really clean up that fade for you. It makes it look like it was always meant to be there. We have one more step that I'm going to do to this, and then our Spectre color is done. So that's that Mission Models. Really good. You can find it at every once in a while. You can find it at Hobby Lobby. I found it online on Amazon. I can leave a link below in the description for you guys. This is going to show you a Vallejo shifter, but that's not what's in here. I was sworn to secrecy on what this is, uh, and I try to keep my promises. And we're just going to shoot this across the back. image just a nice finish to this bait the next bone pattern we're going to be doing is the crappy um, kind of a bruised modeled up crappy here from Anarchy Model UK Stencil from Brian Best and we're going to start with a little bit of the smaller modeling. This is the creatures. We're going to do a straight black for this. So for this crappie, since we're doing a kind of a bruised bone, I'm just going to bring a couple of random areas out. this smaller 
stencil here. And the reason I'm doing this in patches is because I'm going to do strips in the larger version of this stencil. Turn it over and do the same thing on this. smaller one to do some initial stuff on the spine. Now we can bring in the big guns. I'm going to go down at an angle. And I find that that gives a fairly decent, fairly consistent pattern. favorite colors to use with bone, any kind of a bone pattern. It's just a little bit of detail sepia. Come right across the top. Just kind of fade that. And then I'm going to finish it with a detail paint gray. Just shoot straight down across the back. Eyes a little bit. Now this time when it says shifters, it really is this. Don't need much. Even the camera picked that one up. I hope I'm right. I hope you guys can see that. It's really pretty. Let me just give you a quick overview of how that color shift green it says gold brown, but it really looks green to me. Now we've got a tricked out bone that Chad wants, so I think on this I'm going to use a little bit of Liquitex Gold super shiny. It's an acrylic, so you won't have any issues with paints not meshing up. Sometimes they don't. So we're going to start across the back. Yes, I'm just riffing this one. Because on stuff that gets to be my idea, or do as you want with the pattern, Sometimes that's where I have the most fun. Gold seems to do pretty well with bone. I like that it does. I think I want to kind of do maybe a red violet in a couple of spots here. We'll leave the gold that's in the cup in there just so it can get happy. Maybe do just a little bit more cheap. Go 
pull it back towards the tail. Fade that out. I'm gonna add in just a little bit of fun. see that. All I've done is add a little bit of scale into it. And I'm just using a little piece of laundry bag to do that. It's like one of those duffel laundry bags you can grab at Walmart or Kmart. Is Kmart still a thing? I don't even know. Drop a comment. I have no idea. I haven't seen one in ages. So we have some red violet there. You guys can see that. Just create text. I'm now adding some Wicked Moss Green. I'm just going to shoot real light across the back because I still want to be able to see that gold. This is Art Tools. To that, I'm going to add some detailed black magenta into the cup. Three drops because we're going to do a couple other things with it. Find a spot that looks cool. That looks pretty good. I'm going to bring it right. No, I'm not. When it's still wet, you can correct it. Always test the cup on some paper before you do that. Case in point. You'll still see the green, you'll still see the gold. And voila. I'm gonna add just a little bit of mottled look to the belly of this bone. Don't want to go crazy and get too dark. see our green, we can still see our gold, we've got a little bit of red violet in there. We can go ahead and drop just a 
just a little bit of color on these eyes. Got some jet black just to finish off a little peck fin. black in the cup, I'm going to add the shad dot, I'm going to do it with this stencil, and again, find a place where you can get an accurate lay down. And then do the same thing on the other side. I'm laying that right in there. Yeah, you're right. You guys caught that. This is way too small. So we'll use that. As a starting point for a much larger one. Something that more fits the size of this. Without the eyes. And staying true to what I said earlier about not doing patterns verbatim and changing it to my own pattern, we are going to completely black out this bait. Because I'm going to shoot metallics and chrome for this pro blue. It's going to look cool. It's going to stay in the traditional colors of pro blue. And I think it's going to be a little bit louder and pop a lot more. Chrome looks best, just like metallics, against black. So where you would normally start with a white base and work from there, we're completely flipping the script on this one. There's two or three things that you could say to shooting chrome and metallics over black. Number one, Make sure it's as black as you can get. Number two, it might not even be a bad idea to do a transparent base or a clear top coat uh, over top of the black just to really get that chrome going. There's two or three things that you should know about shooting over black. Number one, make sure that the black is completely dry so that the chrome doesn't get sucked into it and absorb and lose its chrome. Same with metallics. Number two, it might not even be a bad idea to put some sort of a top coat or clear coat over the black to really get it to pop off of there. Number three, don't put anything crazy on top of the chrome or on top of the metallics. Basic colors, let them speak for themselves and you'll have yourself a really, really good chrome and metallic. Um, this is just something that I've dumped in to an inkwell that's got a rubber stopper in it to make it easier for me to pull out and put in a paint cup. It's a spastic. I like it. I've tried two or three different things. Wasn't real impressed with a lot of them. Um, even tried some chrome markers. Meh. Spastic's not bad. Again, we're going from light to dark.
does run out fast. Most chromes are alcohol based. So if I were not producing this video, I would be completely masked up. Use a respirator. what it is. more steps to this. I'm going to go back to the black, add just a little bit of it in the cup, shoot it across the top. You will see why in a minute. Last step for the spine. Electric Blue Intense Violet. See what I just did there? Into the chrome in the in the bottom and the lip, I'm going to throw just a little bit of iridescent yellow. Bring it up around the gill plates and the lower lip. Don't want to go crazy with it. Just enough to give it a little bit. Same at the bulk. Bulk. Same at the bulk. Just a little bit there. The rest of it, see if I can get it without hitting the camera. Pardon my reach. Sunburst, fluorescent. I think I said sunrise elsewhere earlier. Maybe in this video, maybe not. Might have been a different video. Need much. Just a little bit. One more drop ought to do it on this side. have a pro blue. Only other thing I'm going to do here real quick is um, just kind of give a little shadow to the gill plates.
So, of course, the way the day has gone, I completely ran out of battery. My phone that I'm holding right now is the only camera that I've got. So, let me give you a quick rundown of these last two baits. This one, the Waka Ayu. I hope I'm not, again, if I butchered the name, I really apologize. So, I started with a sepia fade into light brown. I ran a chartreuse line across the median. And then I added a little bit of gray scaling with the same laundry bag mesh that I've been using and then I've got a little bit of white on the throat. Got the uh, black shad dot, the kill dot from this, just lined it up. And then on my last one, I went ahead and did a detailed black magenta over top of a red violet, which was over top of a metallic light blue and a little per pearl white and chrome on the sides. Turned out really, really cool. This might be my favorite so far. Um, love this color. So, Chad, I hope that you forgive me. I'm profusely apologizing because it has been years since I've lost an order. And um, I hope this makes up for it. Cheers, happy casting, and I will see you guys on the next video.